When we look at these numbers of gods dividing them by the by the, the by thousand simplicity, we get one eight point six, one five point four five, one zero point one, one five point six, one five seven point six, which equals five oh a six oh three point five five. The time of the sun to perform around the galaxy is twenty two million multiplied by the total of number number of gods three times is zero. 603.55, 603.55, 603.55 equals 22 million. The 
the planet characteristic cubes are the orbit times around the sun sums all the planet characteristics to 25.235. Next slide. This is in your scriptures now because when you keep on reading, the whole measurement for the pyramids is in Numbers, the second chapter. So when you talk about the Egyptians doing the pyramids, you're lying to yourself. Eastern numbers and God's relationship so we can continue to go on to the next slide. Let's go, next slide. Next slide. Next slide. This is the same slide my brother Allah Yassad did. So if you were brothers in the dramatic thing, there's another, there's another subject that speaks about Egyptians sleeping with animals. But you and as Egyptian, you're going to cover that up because you're not about what the practice is about. You just want to hear some fly stuff and don't care about the Next one. Let's go, next one. Next one. Next one. Now here you go. Alright. Here we go. Now notice they talk about the white man. Right? Now the Egyptians was the first one to wrestle naked. Now if you notice right here, you see the consula, right? Or the herula. Is that shot up there? Amun 
father may have attempted to father children with his first three eldest daughters. It is suggested that Akin Salu Anu, second's oldest sister, may have died giving childbirth. This is deduced from the scene found in the royal tomb which portrays vivid displays of the occurrence of a woman dying through childbirth. It is almost likely that Akin Akin also fathered children from his other two daughters. Why are we condoning this? golden arms? You like the pyramids that much? Well, you can worship the, the, the Statue of Liberty. We about morality here. If you condone this, then I hope that you and all these people that follow this garbage go down with it. Let's go to the next slide. Why is incest practice? According to Stanford University, your brother like universities over here, but I'm going to tell you something about all the universities he named. Every university a degree is passed down and given ordained, is ordained by the Pope. So he's telling you about the curriculum system of a slave master that in order for you to come up here, you got to be a slave. Shaka, I'm going to say, I only accept degrees. I don't listen to nobody that don't have a PhD degree. But Shaka, I almost left high school at 10th grade. They only deal with people's behavior. You damn right because the information is supposed to make your behavior better. And that's why you, and that's why you got this crappy conscious community that's about taking people's money and not doing nothing with it. When I asked them to go, to, I asked them to go to Ferguson. Nobody wanted to go with me. Not one of these conscious brothers. Let's go. According to staff, go back. Let's let's do let's shoot this. According to staff at university. Classic Professor Walter Scheiders. One reason is the incest sets them apart. Royal incest occurs mainly in societies where rulers have tremendous power and no peers, except the gods, since gods marry each other, so should the royals. All of these maladies are thought to have been results of inbreeding, which is father and mother. His father's sister, Zahawas, which is an article, he writes great articles, he actually goes against the Bible at times too. Wrote a National Geographic, in my view, two comments help us compromise from the moment he was conceived. His mother and father were full brother and sister. Now, see, the difference between what Polite said in the beginning is what people of the lower class did because they were hungry, but these are the people that are the rich, and this is what they're doing. They're the rulers. This is your Baha'i. I'm going to show you. Go ahead. Albert Zick, scientific director of the Institute for Mummies and the Iceman in Italy, uses genetic fingerprinting and tests mitochondrial DNA, which is inherited only from the mother. On this evidence, he showed that Tutankhamun's mother was Akhenaten's sister, according to a Sunday Times report by Fiona Keating. Y'all pushing this, go ahead. Okay, this is me. This thing right here.
find a translation. They're going to change it. Because guess what? Everybody that Dr. Ben quoted, when he quoted his book in a matter of other translations, he was quoting Budge. Shaka Atmos quotes Faulkner. All of these people have the similar and same translations about the homosexual occurrences in Egypt, but they're so upset they're about to change history and everything, and they got this magical book that's going to make every gay Egyptologist happy again. <laughs> Okay, here's another text. It's on that wall. So it says, if there be made a slaughter against me in the rebel festival. Now this is a festival where they didn't have gay things, okay? It says this, against me in a striking of horns, then will a swelling occur in the eye of the jet, then I will swallow for myself. Egyptian heart disease epidemic, right? Researchers decided to tackle the problem head on by performing a CT scan on the heart of 52 mummies. Out of 44 mummies, they were surprised a bit with by how the, just how much arteriosclerosis were found in ancient Egyptians who were young. The average age of death around them in the mummies was 40 years old. This is what you're taking us back to? But come on, we got more than this. Ancient Egyptian lifespan. Now that's not the count of other mummies. Now while there were some Egyptians like, that lived until their 90s, like King Ramses II, the average life expectancy was mid-30, 30, 33 years old was being the estimate of the average age. Who wants to go back to living to 33 years old? Let's be serious. If their knowledge was so deep, why they couldn't save themselves? No. Use common sense, man. Huh? Use common sense. Let's go to the next one. Right, Ancient mummies show even the rich Egyptians. Here's the first human sacrifice you see. But notice you see four arcs above the piercing of a man's chest and a bowl catching the blood, right? Here go to the next slide. Okay, I got it. Sacrifice of the early king serving for the afterlife. You can read it, we don't have much time. We have 200 or something slides, not enough time to get it. But I want you to look at this. Is it okay to kill your servant because the Pharaoh died so somebody can serve his lazy ass in the afterlife? Is that spirituality? Yeah, if that's spirituality, that's why we're struggling in the conscious damn community. Because you don't know what spirituality is. Ain't no serving of God in the afterlife and being enslaved. The enemy scenes of the mortuary. Go ahead. Skip it. All right, all right, all right. Ancient Egyptian carving shows the count of hands. Now, this is my man, the Magi, trying to show you something. He said, in ancient Magi's, we took hands and heads. Right, right, right. He didn't tell you about the penis that they were taking in. That's right, that's right. He didn't tell you about the, 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 he didn't tell you about the hot dogs, the sabers. He didn't tell you about the real Hebrew nationals and where they come from. <laughs> now, here you go. Why is the priest bringing it inside the temple and counting hands inside the temple? Let's go to the next one. All right. 
You don't need to go. You don't need to go. Don't go this route. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. All right. Here you go. There is a there is a priest in the front counting it in front of Ramses. Then there's a priest that's counting it. He's the scribe. He's the one who's taking it and recording it. And there go the heavens behind them. They're singing the anthems of the penis. If you look at the D right there, right, you see the loop of the hand because he's forming an arc. Talk about. It. He's starting to form an arc. I'm going to show you when you see it in the first picture when they were taking lives. You see the arc because an arc does mean life, but it don't mean the life you think it means. Let's go. No. Here go the penises right here, power of penises. If you go. look at it, some of them are filleted. I am not lying to you. There you go. Go ahead, next slide. Next slide. There you go. Next there you slide. There you go. Next slide. All right, this is about the festival they had. They used to celebrate the missing penis of Osiris. This was a good holiday. Hopefully you can get this off at your job. Next slide. Here we go. All right, next slide. Oh, don't worry about it. Now, you check this out, right? Look at the article. Now, notice, this article is telling you about Egypt that they had diseases, sexual diseases, right? Now, here's how they, now, it was so pristine, how could you catch a sexually transmitted disease? Let's see what they made in Egypt. Go. sacrifices, I brought this out. They're so focused on homosexuality in Egypt, they missed the whole presentation I did last year. Go ahead. <laughs> now, let me tell you, this is the Lady of Taparet Funeral Stella, and it tells you what she has to bring to Ray Herakati as a sacrifice to make it into the netherworld. Now, if you look at it, the two pillars on the side of the lotus, and they represent, and they're holding up the balance, they're holding up the sky in balance, right? But what do you look at at the sacrificial table? You see all the fruits and vegetables, but if you look to the right hand pillar and the left hand pillar at the bottom, one of the things that brought Maha'at or balance to the universe was the head, or the sacrificial head, of Asiatics. If you look at the bottom, let's continue. This is how you got Maha'at. All right, here goes Akhenaten and his two children. You see the hands of a tin coming down because they're actually coming to receive an offering, and then when they give the offering, they give it back as a as a ark. They'll give you an ark in favor of your offering, and it's put to the mouth or the nose. But those are his children. What Akhenaten has in his lap is called a cop knife. A cop knife is a sacrificial knife that doubles as a maat knife. Let's go. All right, here goes the cop. It's also found in the cat that belongs to Tuthmosis, the cat sarcophagus. And I want to tell you this. Guess what sarcophagus means? It's only found in Greeks in Egypt. Guess what sarcophagus means? Flesh eater. Salt. Flesh. Sarcophagus. Eater. The cat is robbed. The flesh will repeatedly kill the giant python with the knife, but chop it off his head. Continue. Let's go to the next one. The chop knife is a magical doublet blade that shapes the feather of Ma'at. He is sometimes depicted eating Catherine's head. Now, my head is depicted eating Catherine's head. He is first seen on a, a Harris of Papyrus, and he's known as the devourer of Catherine's. These are their gods, but I want to show you this is a kid's book. I'm getting this from a kid's book. Whoa. Go ahead to the next one. Yeah. Who is the cat? The, the cat is the male uh, manifestation of himself, of Ra himself. And he was called Mua because of the speech of the God who said concerning him. Failure to answer the question correctly resulted to the soul being given to Amin, the devourer of the dead and the soul eater. This is the Papyrus of Ani, the devourer of the dead and the soul eater. Listen to all the God's names. Come on, let's go. The Papyrus of Nebuchadnezzar reveals that the knife was usually a ritualistic kill children. Now if you read the Papyrus of Nebuchadnezzar, it tells you about the children of rebellion, and if you scroll up, it tells you about the cop knife that was used to cut them open. Let's go to the next one. Alright, the Tri-State Medical, it tells you where the Egyptian cannibals in recent unearthed there were found piles of ribs, flesh scraped bones, showing where human teeth gnawed them. This is Professor Peachtree. This is Peachtree. Now read the article. 
article. All right, let's check this article. Let's go to the next one. All right, here goes Ramsey's wife, and here goes Arsette. What does Arsette have on her head? She has a vulture on her head. Now in Egypt, they tell you a vulture is a, a, a nurturing mother, which a vulture is. But that's the romanticism of Egypt. Because what else does a vulture do? Yeah. Eat that body. Let's stop playing stupid. The other goddess, all the goddess is called Mu. If you look at a Mu and you look at the two double letter um, um, and, and, um, MT for Mu, you see a falcon and a penis. What is the falcon eating? What is the vulture eating? This is ignorance if you think about it, so let's go. But that is that little sash on her is a sacrificial blood, which is called the blood of Isis. When she links to her sacrificial, when she holds her up, because the up is connected to the sacrifices. Go ahead, watch. Pyramid text. Who eats the entrails of even those who become with their bodies full of magic and islands? The Pharaoh of the Lord offering the knock of the corn who himself prepares his meals. Pharaoh, he, he who eats men and lives off of God. Let's go. I got two minutes. I got it. All right, pyramid text. I read this last year. And they said it was symbolic, but I'm going to show you it's not symbolic. Continue. It talks about the Lord is eating the throat, extracting the blood from the bodies. It is Shimzu who will cut them off for the Pharaoh and cooks the meal in his dinner pots. Shimzu. Shimzu is the god of the wine press. What do you do with the wine? You crush it and get the blood out of the grape. Right? Let's go to Shimzu. Shinzu, the god of execution, slaughter of blood, all you want. He punishes the unrighteous by placing their heads in the wine press to remove the blood in the last of sin. I didn't make this up, you fools. Let's go. Pyramid text. Lo, their body, I got you. Lo, their body is their father's buried. The ox is the possession of the surplus of the mill that's cooked. Y'all don't want to hear this. Watch this. Go ahead, next slide. Wise eat much. Wise eat much, right? This is not the best. The notion that by eating flesh or particularly drinking the blood of another living being, man absorbs his nature or life into his own hands. But the idea of hunting and roasting and eating the gods as described above is not common amongst the ancient nations. The main object of the dead king is doing this was to secure eternal life, which was particularly attributed to the gods. This is why he was telling you about cannibalism in ancient Egypt. This is the picture of this is the picture of Menhas. And Osiris riding on his back. You see the fire coming out of the head of the captains of the Shemitic people. I want you to look at that sign right there on the side. That's a determinative right there. Go to the determinative on the next page. Determinative over the dead people's body is fire, heat, and cook. You got to learn this stuff yourself. This stuff is telling on itself. This is ignorance. If this is the foolishness we're following, I got 25 seconds. Let's go to the next slide. All right, John Henry Clark said, I could not and would not hurt a fly. Well, dang, he sure is strangling the hell out of this duck right here. Manepta, the Egyptian pharaoh, this is a whole different pharaoh now. The other one was Ramses that liked to play with the penises. But had inscribed on the walls of the temple to call back the story and amputation of a 13,000 fly of his enemies. Time, let's go.